Thinking of moving to Canada? Of course you are, and we can help. Canada, explained hilariously. Oh, progressives, you need some comforting. So let's take the long view for a sec. The Republic's 244 years old. You guys have had your fair share of scoundrel presidents before, so what's four more years? No biggie. Trump's a bully, a blight on the presidency, but mostly he's just a blip. A racist, rapist blip. T-Rex, your ex-Secretary of State, put it best when he said, The man is a fucking moron. But hey, you'll get over it. You always do. Canada Curious. This is the Yes We Canada podcast. The progressive's guide to getting the fuck out. On the other hand, you know all those federal judges leader of the Senate Mitch McConnell is appointing? As soon as we get back in session, we'll start confirming judges again. We need to have hearings and we need to confirm judges. Uh, my motto for the year is leave no vacancy behind. That hasn't changed. The pandemic will not prevent us from achieving that goal. Yeah, almost 200 federal judges, a couple of Supremes with a third Supreme waiting in the wings. He's got lots more vacancies to fill on his right-wing judge conveyor belt. And here's the thing. Ever heard that expression, die on the bench? Yep, this could take a while. Clear. Nurse, here comes the judge. Woe the people. Maybe it's time to find an exit plan. Look up. No, way up. Past Maine, past Minnesota, past Seattle. Hey, how you doing? Yes, we Canada. Or as you may think of us after your next election and you bust a move, home. Come on up. The socialism's fine. I came on up in 1971 when as a 14-year-old, my family moved from New York to Canada's smallest province, Prince Edward Island. Get in the car, my mother said. One island's the same as the next. Now to get to PEI, you drive to Boston, hang a left, and drive for a day or two. Then you take a really long bridge, about eight miles, to this little island with a population of 142,000 people that's actually a province which is the same as your state's, just with more power. PEI is a seductress. She's a tart. When you see her in the summer with her stunning red clay hills and lush green fields surrounded by the salty blue sea and the friendliest folk you'd ever want to meet, you think to yourself, this is paradise. I found paradise. Enjoy that feeling because it's not what you're going to be thinking in the middle of February. My parents went to PEI on vacation in 1970 and the tart swept them up in her arms and caressed them and they bought an abandoned farmhouse with shore frontage and 100 acres for $16,000 Canadian, which at the time was 200 bucks American. My father's a photographer. You know that picture of Marilyn Monroe standing on the subway grate in New York City? with her pleated white dress being gently blown up into the air by a couple of teamsters with huge fans hiding under a subway grate? Yeah, he took that. It was a promo shoot for the film The Seven Year Itch, and he was one of the many photographers there that night. But his take on the evening was unique, and his chemistry with Ms. Monroe was quite remarkable. My mother was a writer, New York Times, Harper's Bazaar, etc., and a therapist. I have two brothers and a sister. At the time of our immigration, Uncle Sam was very interested in sending as many American boys as he could to rice paddies in Vietnam. My parents said, not on my shift, you don't. And they applied for Canadian immigration, just like you're going to do, and they up and left. Love it and leave it. Well, the abandoned farmhouse my parents bought in the summer, the one with no toilet or running water, holes in the roof, and Two tons of rotting potatoes in the basement had gone through a very, very rough winter. In fact, we drove right by it. That's the house! No fucking way. Way? Oh, fuck. Fuck. 